ChatGPT has tons of ways to boost productivity, but if you're not using these three simple proven workflows, you're seriously missing out. I rely on these every single day to stay organized and focused. What used to drain my energy or steal hours now happens effortlessly. And in this video, I'll show you how to capture every idea before it disappears, turn messy tasks into clarity, and cut through information overload instantly. Let's dive into the first use case, how to capture every idea before it disappears. Good ideas never show up at convenient times. We've all had that moment, walking the dog, grabbing lunch, and suddenly, a thought pops in, and if we don't capture it right away, it's gone. Most of us have tried voice memos or typing notes, and we know the pain. You either can't type fast enough, or you end up cleaning up messy audio later. That little bit of friction is enough to lose half of the ideas we have. ChatGPT's voice mode changes that. No worrying about phrasing, no testing your short-term memory, you just speak. You can make this even more hands-free by adding a shortcut. For example, on an iPhone, you can create a Siri shortcut that opens ChatGPT in voice mode. And the beauty isn't just convenience. Seeing that shortcut phrase actually primes your brain, like flipping a mental switch, so you enter capture mode instantly. You're not only making it easier, you're training your brain to think on cue. So here's how it works in practice. Step one is setting up your shortcut. On your iPhone, just open the Shortcuts app, tap the plus sign to create a new one, and search ChatGPT. You'll see a few options here, just choose the voice mode. Then rename it to something you'll actually remember. I call my voice idea. So now, anytime I say, hey Siri, voice idea, ChatGPT's voice mode opens instantly. No tapping, no friction, just ready to capture whatever's on my mind. Step two is speaking freely. It feels more like a brain dump than a polished explanation. And if you need a pause, throw in a little um, ah, uh, to keep it listening. The goal isn't clarity here, it's flow. You want to keep your momentum, stay in the idea, and let the AI handle the organizing later. Step three is summarizing. When I'm finished, I usually just type one word, summary, that's it. And look what happens. ChatGPT puts out the core insights from all that rambling, for example, with this idea, I was actually talking about information overload and how we manage it in the AI age. ChatGPT broke it down into clean sections, the opportunity, the mindset shift, and then the philosophical focus. Then it put out the creative journey insights and all the supporting source I had. I really love the philosophical focus part because I didn't even realize I was framing my thoughts through these perspectives until ChatGPT points that out. The benefit is that you start to see patterns in your own thinking and you wouldn't catch it on your own. And that's really all it takes. Set up your shortcut, speak freely, and let ChatGPT do the summarization. Within a couple of minutes, your raw thoughts move straight from your head into a clear, usable note without breaking your flow. Instead of fighting the messiness, you lean into it and ChatGPT handles the organization. If you want more than just the how-to AI tips, if you want the mindset and psychological behind using AI, then subscribe to Question Forward. Let's move to the second use case, planning, turning overwhelm into clarity. At first glance, planning and capture look the same. Both start with a brain dump, getting everything out of your head and into AI. But the real difference is who leads the conversation. With capture, you lead and AI follows, preserving all your thoughts. With planning, AI leads, you let it interview you. Pull out context and structure everything into clarity. A common misconception is that planning with AI means dumping a to-do list into ChatGPT and expecting it to magically organize everything. But it can't know your priorities, your energy curve, or the hidden dependencies between projects. Like asking a personal trainer to design your workout without asking about your goals or fitness level. The real productivity gain here is that AI doesn't replace your judgment, it structures it. And setting this up is simple. Let me show you by two simple steps. Step one, make sure your Google Calendar is connected to ChatGPT. Click your thumbnail, go to settings, select connectors on the left menu, choose Google Calendar, and log in with the email linked to the calendar you want to connect. From now on, when you mention Google Calendar in your prompt, ChatGPT can pull information directly. 
Step 2. Let AI lead. You want AI to interview you. So first, prepare a to-do list. I like to separate mine into regular tasks and big projects. Then I let ChatGPT ask me questions to pull out the details of these projects. I want it to fit everything into a framework that makes prioritization easier. Here's the exact prompt I use. I want you to be my planning partner for this week. I've connected my Google Calendar, so please check my schedule for all meetings and deadlines this week. Here's my to-do list, regular tasks, big projects. Before you prioritize, ask me questions to understand my goals, constraints, and what matters most. Then use appropriate frameworks to give me a structured plan. Look what happens. ChatGPT first shows me meetings for the week in a table format, super clear to scheme, and it lets me quickly check if anything missing. Then it suggests questions about outcomes and priorities, constraints and availability, scope and the definitions of done, inputs and collaboration, and even my planning style. These are the generic what's your deadline questions. They're the kind of strategic questions a consultant would ask. I usually pull up a page in Notion and type my answers first. That way I don't risk accidentally sending half-finished messages in ChatGPT. You know how it is. Hit enter and it's gone. Line breaks need shift enter, and you still can't change that settings in ChatGPT. Also, I don't always answer every single question. I treat the list as a framework to give context. Most of the time, I just dump all my thoughts about the projects in a paragraph, then I copy paste that into ChatGPT and let the magic happen. Let's look at the answer. It gives me a clean prioritized plan. First, priorities for the week, then a structured weekly plan. I love the priorities section because it gives me something concrete to double check. I can see right away if it lines up with how I see the project priorities. And if it doesn't, I can give feedback and adjust. It's good to have solid anchors for the plan. That way I can review before committing and I still feel in control. Once you have the baseline, you can keep the conversation going. If you're worried about overlaps, just ask ChatGPT to check. It will scan for conflicts and show you where they are. If a new meeting pops up, you know, that happens a lot. You don't need to regenerate your whole plan. You can just add to your prompt. Only show me which tasks are affected and adjust the time blocks for those. In my case, ChatGPT showed me only the changes on Wednesday. I didn't have read through a long updated plan. So here's the big picture. You start with a simple to-do list. Then you let AI pull in your calendar automatically. No waste effort copying over meetings or typing times. AI takes away the mental burden of juggling constraints, deadlines, and focus the time across projects. Instead of drowning in to-do list, you get a week that actually works for you. The last use case I want to highlight, and probably the most common one, is summarizing large chunks of information effectively. Everyone probably thinks that they know how to summarize. But I do think we have some big misconception here. So let me break down what most people miss. We all know for summary, you have to input how you provide the information to the AI and the output, the form and the style of the summary you get back. The input part is straightforward. There are three main ways to feed files into ChatGPT. First, there's the direct upload. You can simply drop in a PDF or a markdown file right into the chat, and ChatGPT will read it. Second, there's Google Drive integration. You connect your drive and you just search for the document you need and add it straight into the chat. And third, there's Notion integration. This one is really useful for someone like me who mainly use Notion to manage all their files. You can link your Notion workspace so ChatGPT can access your pages. Now let's move to the output how you actually ask for the summary. Most people think summary is about AI read so I don't have to. That shorter text means saving time. But here's the problem. A generic summary is like reading a map without knowing where you're going. You see the roads, but none of it means anything. Any summary without a specific purpose is just text. You read it, then you forget about it. That's because our brain stores information that connects to what we already care about or need to do. Without that connection, information just slides right off and AI can't guess what you care about. So you need to tell it your purpose upfront. That's how you get a summary that actually sticks. This gives AI a lens to zoom in on what matters and organize information in ways that's easy to digest. I'll walk you through two situations using the same research paper. 
Here's the scenario. Our team is trying to improve workplace productivity, and I'm assigned to research how eating habits and nutrition affect performance. After narrowing down sources, I've uploaded an 18-page research paper, a read that would normally take two hours. And now nobody reads long documents anymore, so quickly grasping dense information and capturing the essence has become more important than ever. My first need is simple. I just want to know what's in this document. What topics does it cover? I tell AI my purpose. I've never seen this document before. Give me an overview of what it contains and choose a format that best shows me the range of information, like an outline, a table, or a concept map. The goal is to understand what's there, not every detail. And look at this response. I can see the document focuses on cognitive interventions, behavioral approaches, and mixed strategies. In the findings section, it gives me what these strategies actually are. Then the discussion translates that into practical implications: what works, what doesn't. Here's why this isn't random information. I define my purpose first, so AI organized everything around orientation. My brain sees patterns and anchors, not disconnected facts. That's the difference between slides off and sticks. Watch what happens when I shift my purpose. This time, I want to see the different ways eating habits connect to productivity. I'm not ready for details. I just want options, some directions I could take. I would tell AI my purpose and ask it for pathways rather than a single answer. Based on this document, show me two to three possible directions I could explore if my focus is how eating habits affect workplace productivity. For each direction, outline what types of information I need to look at, like definitions, methods, evidence, or practical takeaways. Don't go into details yet. Just give me the roadmap. The response shows me three directions I could explore, each with a roadmap: direct productivity metrics, mental well-being as the link. And workplace environment change. This isn't just a condensed version of the document. It's organized pathways. When I read through this, my understanding of the document increases because all the information here has a purpose instead of just random context. The productivity gain here isn't going from long documents to short summaries. The shift is from unfocused reading to targeted extraction. You're not asking AI to replace your thinking. You're asking it to organize information around your thinking. You read less, but you read with purpose. So there you have it: three workflows that change how ChatGPT fits into your day. Capture keeps ideas from disappearing. Planning turns overwhelm into structure. Summarize gives you what matters, not just everything. If you want more content about the mindset behind AI, not just tactics. Subscribe to Question Forward. That's what we are sharing here.